sure. I was just, I was, I was starting to get mad. I was mad about the Bush administration. I was mad about Rob Bishop and the, just this Energy Solutions connection and this, all this stuff. And I was just like, this has got to stop. And I was, I was really, and, and I was thinking about the stuff. And within those two, three weeks of just pondering that talk to my family, Rob called me and invited me to run as Democrat. And I said, all right, I'll sign back up. So I signed back up as a Democrat, and, and you know, which I was in the beginning. Um, and I've, I've come back, and I've come to really appreciate the struggle we have here. And it is a struggle, but it's a, it's a fight worth fighting because what's happened with this one-party rule in the state, it's, it's gone too far. The money influence is huge here, and it really is, to me, um, it's not a good thing. So here I am in Weaver County, and I mentioned this. The second run, why the second run? Because I got 30%. I thought, wow, I'm really close, okay, you know. But the second run, um, I wasn't going to do it. And then I got asked again. Uh, Peter Kroon and people, Peter's people talked to me. Uh, Wayne Holland talked to me. Uh, and some other people, a lot of other people encouraged me and asking me. But what it boiled down to was, is number one, I want to knock out Rob Bishop. I'd love to have him. I'd love you guys to have a representative. We need to have a representative, okay? It'd be nice to have a representative again, because we haven't had one for eight years. Uh, but on top of that, Weber County is a sleeping giant, and we've got to awaken the giant. If we awaken Weber County and can restore Weber County's place as a democratic stronghold in the state, we can then be competitive statewide. And as I told Peter, I said, you know, I, mean, I, I I'm doing this because I want to focus a lot in areas where we can build the party and give you a shot at becoming governor and give a statewide candidate a shot at becoming a senator and so or, or in other constitutional offices as well. So that's why I'm here. I'm here for a lot of reasons, but really ultimately I'm here to build something here because I think we can see a movement and in a year or two or three or four down the line, I think we will definitely see some statewide victories here again. But Weaver's gonna be a key to that. So here I am. So questions and fire. I'll ask the first question. Yeah, please do. The biggest issue that's going to hit us as legislators this next session is called immigration. And to me, I think the immigration battle has already started, but I think we can make this battle our battle to win in that there's a lot of people in the state of Utah that are immigrants, that are legal citizens, that are not registered to vote. That's correct. I'm willing to take on and organize Weaver County and get those immigrants registered to vote. You have volunteers and you start to put together a database of volunteers that can help us get on the ground, go to the doors, and, and get these immigrants registered and get them out to vote. Because I think that's going to be the key for us winning in November. Because the Republicans have brought the issue to the forefront and now I think we've just got to be able to tap in to our supporters, which the Hispanic and the and those other immigrants really are democratic supporters if we can just tap into them. Yeah, and I think too, when you get it, especially on the Hispanic side of things, not of course, I grew up in California, worked in California, and we did uh, voter registration. One of the things, I used to work for Willie Brown, I don't know if you know him, he was the mayor of San Francisco, and also at the time speaker of the California State Assembly. They were able to raise a lot of money for voter registration. And I ran voter registration organizations up and down the San Joaquin Valley. And we registered, uh, I mean, one summer was 28,000 people. I mean, it was a huge effort. Um, I, I think that's absolutely key. And one of the things I've been talking with party leaders here in the state and other people that donate pretty heavily to party causes is this idea of Weber County and a voter registration drive here. So that's something that's very much on my mind, and we, we do need to work in tandem on that. And it'll be a long-term process as well. I mean, this cycle, but the second cycle, to get to 2012, I mean, this this is something we need to be looking at as a strategic thing, because it is. I think it's vital that we do enlighten those people. And and for instance, you'll get you get the Republicans have their appeal to a Hispanic voter, but with the immigration issue, I think they've just cut themselves off to many of them, not all of them, but many of them. The Democrats have an appeal because there's two things that that they vote on the moral issues. They're pretty conservative, very family or values oriented. On the on the um, on the work issues and those kinds of issues, they are more democratic, and so they would have a tendency to, to align themselves with the Democrats. And so I think we need to need to look at that. We need to build that up. Uh, very successful efforts in California uh, changed whole natures of districts and 
places that were solid Republican became moderate or swing, and I think we could do the same thing here. I don't. I think you're right. We've got to get them involved. So that's going to take a big effort and some leadership. So, thank well, you. too, with redistricting going to happen after this election, you know, the makeup of the Utah legislature is going to be a key also. But if we can stop a supermajority in either house, you know, if we can win five seats in the House and three seats in the Senate, that becomes a more involved game. So. To me, that's going to be the key or the impetus to be able to get our Democrats out to vote, just to be able to stop that supermajority. And then the following years, we can start building to a majority base. Yeah, and the other, there's another key, too, and another reason why I, I just hope and pray and work my heart out for Peter Carruner is you at least have a veto. Right. And it's overridable, but it's going to look pretty disingenuous to override a gerrymandered veto that's that's so blatantly you know wrong now they probably would they're probably brazen enough to do it right yeah but at least at least there's some transparency there and he goes this is ridiculous and this is not going to fly go back to the drawing board you know hopefully that will happen that will be a, that would be a wonderful thing to have happen uh, when that goes i mean we're, we're, we're on line for four seats this year and i was hearing somebody saying there's a possibility of a fifth even but i don't know there is well, it depends on your population. You yeah. get 500,000, and Utah's hitting at 3 million. So yeah. So we, we could hit a six seed. Or even a six, and we pick up two. Right. Uh, if we, it, it, you know, and I can see them now carving Salt Lake up the six, like the pie wedge approach to, right. you know. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe maybe with, with the little, you know, the one scenario they had when they were talking of giving us the fourth seed, that specialized fourth seed that we are going to do, which never materialized. Um, the, the map, if it works right, you'd have a pretty strong Democrat in the core. You'd have two very, very strong Republicans and then a moderate to right-leaning district that would come up here but would sliver down into Salt Lake as well. And, you know, we're looking at this particular district, including Ogden, Weber, and that part of Salt Lake, even though it would be fairly right, in 2012 could very likely be a hotly competitive district. And so we're also building for that potential and that possibility too. So there's a lot of work to do. Not a lot of work to do. Yeah. Good thoughts though. Other questions? Yeah. Um, some economists have proposed uh, a speculation tax where like if a Wall Street chieftain buys a hundred million dollars of credit default swaps, they pay a tax of one percent on it. Um, because like even um, Fortune magazine said that there's a the main difference between credit default swaps and Las Vegas gambling was Las Vegas gambling was regulated by the Nevada Gaming Commission. Right. And credit default swaps were were just done right and left. But but it seems to make sense to me be, that if you're going to charge a indigent mother a tax of five percent on a blanket or something, that a Wall Street chief did not have pay. Uh, some little tax on a hundred million dollar credit default swap or so like that. How would you feel? Well, once again, you get to the point. The the uh, the woman that's going to buy the blanket uh, cannot hire the battery of lobbyists that the, the Wall Street yeah. uh, <laughs> can hire to throw into the office to, to create the rules. So I would agree with you. I do think one, a lot more transparency. Two, I have no problem with something like that. Those guys simply took pension funds and they took they taken you know basically destroy our economy and then they get richer you know the, the top 25 hedge fund uh, operators in this country made a, made on average a billion dollars each that's just individual money to, to a person yeah. why they, and then they destroyed our nation's economy and they get paid out for that so you're right I think I think we ought to clamp down on that uh, one of the things is we got to this point where we sort of we, we sort of have a banker also becomes a broker, becomes a, all the lines got skewed over the last 30 years, becomes a, all the lines got skewed over the last 30 years. And because of that, they, they gamble with our money, and they don't use their own money to gamble with it. They destroy our pension funds, they destroy our economic well-being, they destroy our uh, 401ks, and at the same time now, they benefit, 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 and I, I just, I can't see that as the rational approach to things. And so, you've got to have some kind of some kind of lockdown on that, and I think that's that's a very reasonable idea. One reason I suggested I for the last year I've 
had a monthly column in the Standard Examiner 